The year is 1879. In Leipzig, Germany, something extraordinary is happening. Wilhelm Wundt, a physiologist with an insatiable curiosity, has established the world's first experimental psychology laboratory. This marked a pivotal moment. Psychology was breaking free from its philosophical roots, it was starting its journey to become a science. Wundt's goal was ambitious yet straightforward. He wanted to study the human mind using the same rigor applied to the natural world. His primary tool was introspection, the systematic observation of one's own thoughts and feelings. Wundt believed that by carefully analyzing the content of consciousness, we could unlock the secrets of the mind. Wundt's laboratory was a hub of activity, attracting students from around the globe. They came to learn his methods and contribute to this new field of experimental psychology. Among them was Edward Titchener, who would become a key figure in the development of structuralism, one of the earliest schools of thought in psychology. Wundt's laboratory was a place of meticulous observation. He trained his students to become experts in introspection. They would be presented with carefully controlled stimuli. These could be sounds, images, or even physical sensations. The students would then describe their inner experiences in detail. Wundt believed that consciousness could be broken down into its basic elements. He compared this process to a chemist analyzing the components of a complex substance. However, Wundt was also interested in the processes that organize these elements. He called this aspect of his work voluntarism. Voluntarism emphasized the active role of the mind in organizing experience. Wundt argued that we are not simply passive recipients of sensory information. Instead, our attention, intentions, and motivations shape how we perceive and interact with the world. Edward Titchener, a devoted student of Wundt, carried the torch of introspection to America. He established his own laboratory at Cornell University. Titchener further developed Wundt's ideas, giving rise to structuralism. Structuralism focused on identifying the fundamental building blocks of consciousness. Titchener believed that there were three basic elements of experience, sensations, images, and feelings. Sensations were the raw data of experience like the color red or the sound of a bell. Images were mental representations of sensations like remembering the smell of freshly baked bread. Feelings were the emotional responses to sensations and images. Titchener's approach to introspection was incredibly rigorous. He trained his subjects to avoid imposing their own interpretations or meanings on their experiences. Instead, they were to describe only the raw sensations, images, and feelings they experienced. This focus on objectivity was paramount to Titchener's structuralism. While Titchener was meticulously dissecting the structure of consciousness, a different perspective was emerging in America. William James, a brilliant philosopher and psychologist at Harvard University, championed the school of functionalism. James argued that instead of focusing on the structure of consciousness, we should study its purpose. James saw consciousness as a stream, a continuous flow of thoughts, feelings, and sensations. He believed that trying to isolate its elements was like trying to study a river by pinning down a single drop of water. Instead, James emphasized the adaptive nature of consciousness. It had evolved to help us survive and thrive in a complex world. James's functionalism drew inspiration from Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Just as physical traits evolved to serve a purpose, so too do mental processes. James explored questions like how habits are formed, the nature of attention, and the functions of emotions. Structure versus function, a clash of perspectives. The late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed a clash of titans in the fledgling field of psychology. Structuralism, with its emphasis on introspection and the elements of consciousness, stood in stark contrast to functionalism, which focused on the purpose and adaptive value of mental processes. Titchener's structuralism was criticized for being too narrow in its focus. Critics argued that reducing consciousness to its basic elements failed to capture the richness and complexity of human experience. Furthermore, introspection itself came under fire for being too subjective. Different individuals often provided vastly different introspective reports, making it difficult to establish reliable and generalizable findings. Functionalism, with its broader focus on the functions of consciousness, resonated more with the practical spirit of American psychology. James's work on habit formation, for example, had clear implications for education and child development. The Legacy of Two Schools 
Despite their differences, both structuralism and functionalism left an indelible mark on psychology. Structuralism, though short-lived as a dominant school of thought, helped establish psychology as a rigorous, experimental science. Titchener's insistence on precise observation and measurement laid the groundwork for future generations of psychologists. Functionalism, on the other hand, proved to be a more enduring influence. Its focus on the purpose of mental processes paved the way for the development of applied psychology, including fields like industrial and organizational psychology, and educational psychology. Even though structuralism faded as a distinct school of thought, its emphasis on understanding the basic components of mental life continues to be relevant. Cognitive psychology, a dominant force in modern psychology, shares some similarities with structuralism in its quest to unravel the workings of the mind. Introspection's Enduring Allure and Limitations Introspection, the cornerstone of both structuralism and functionalism, continues to hold a certain allure. After all, who knows our own thoughts and feelings better than ourselves? However, as a scientific tool, introspection has significant limitations. One of the biggest challenges is the subjective nature of introspective reports. What one person experiences as a bright red, another might describe as a dull crimson. Furthermore, it is difficult to verify the accuracy of introspective reports. We can't climb inside someone else's mind to see if their experience matches their description. Despite its limitations, introspection can still be a valuable tool for generating hypotheses and gaining insights into the workings of the mind. However, it is crucial to be aware of its limitations and to combine introspective data with other, more objective measures. Beyond structuralism and functionalism, the evolution continues. The early battles between structuralism and functionalism may be over, but the quest to understand the mind continues. Psychology has evolved into a vast and multifaceted field, encompassing a wide range of perspectives and approaches. From the behaviorism of John B. Watson and B.F. Skinner, to the cognitive revolution of the mid-20th century, psychology has continually refined its methods and expanded its scope. Today neuroscientists peer inside the brain, social psychologists study how we interact with others, and clinical psychologists develop treatments for mental disorders. The early pioneers of psychology, from Wundt and Titchener to James and beyond, may not have imagined the incredible diversity and complexity of their field today. Yet their contributions laid the foundation for the scientific study of the mind, a legacy that continues to shape our understanding of ourselves and the world around us. The Enduring Quest to Understand the Mind As we delve deeper into the 21st century, the quest to understand the mind remains one of the most profound and challenging endeavors of our time. We are still unraveling the mysteries of consciousness, perception, emotion, and behavior. The tools at our disposal are more sophisticated than ever before. We have brain imaging techniques that allow us to observe the brain in action, powerful computers that can process vast amounts of data, and a growing understanding of the genetic and environmental factors that shape who we are. The journey that began in Wundt's humble laboratory in Leipzig continues to this day. With each new discovery, with each step forward, we gain a deeper appreciation for the wonder and complexity of the human mind. The quest to understand ourselves is, after all, the most incredible adventure. If you found this video insightful and want to keep exploring the fascinating world of psychology, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. To ensure you never miss out on our latest deep dives into the mind, tap the bell icon to get notified instantly. Let's continue unraveling the mysteries of the brain and mental well-being. And hey, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.